Was that the Yao Qing general who just dropped in out of nowhere? Oh, she's so awesome. I mean, when Yun Li swung that massive sword, she just casually blocked her attack with ease. <sighs> and mine too. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. But to go up against Yun Li is quite impressive, you know? That aura of heroism and grace. It almost makes me want to learn Sienjo swordplay. You think so too, right? I agree. General Fei Xiao is indeed impressive. Uh, I was talking about Yen Qing, actually. Thanks for the kind words, Miss March. The war dance is coming up, and I've been chosen to represent the Cloud Knights in the ceremony. I've had my fair share of defeats lately, and even though I know there are always more skilled swordmasters out there, seeing General Fei Xiao's skills today has made me feel a bit uneasy again. Don't underestimate yourself. After all, generals won't fight in the ring during the war dance. Just remember the state of mind you had when you single-handedly took on me and Blade, putting life and death aside. With that mindset, you can prevail against most challengers. I see. Thanks for the advice, Master Don Hung. By the way, now that today's events are over, General Jing Yuan wants to invite all of you to the Seat of Divine Foresight. He has something important to discuss. I bet it's about how to deal with the generals from the Yao Qing and the Ju Ming. I really don't want to get caught up in grown-up games so soon. I just hope Generals Fei Xiao and Hui An can see the truth. We don't need any more chaos on the La Fu before the war dance. It... Earlier at the Palace of Astrum, I introduced these guests from the Astral Express to you, Elder Huayan. But with all the people around, we only exchanged pleasantries. Now, I'd like to officially introduce them to you. These three braved great dangers, accompanying me into perilous places, defeating the chief culprit Fantilia, and uncovering the conspiracies of the disciples of Sanctus Medicus. If you wish to know more, Please, feel free to ask us. Well, I skimmed through the reports about the Arbor's rebirth from the Master Diviner Hu Xuin. She's been summoned to the Yuchue for questioning. There are a lot of doubts within the Alliance about this whole situation. But despite all that, I believe in you. Since you joined the ranks, you have repeatedly achieved remarkable feats. After the High Cloud Quintet each went their separate ways, despite the many criticisms within the Alliance, the Marshal still stood firm against the dissenting voices and entrusted the Lawfu to you. Over the years, you've served the Alliance with loyalty and wisdom. You've taken down abominations in Thalassa, rescued the Xianzhou Yuchui from a siege, and destroyed the demonic planet summoned by the denizens of abundance. I still remember those battles vividly. There are fools who doubt your loyalty. They're happy to see the divine foresight fail because it gives them some kind of sick satisfaction. They haven't achieved anything of their own, so they feed off the failures of others. But I've seen enough failures in my time, and I want to believe that your loyalty has never wavered. So General Fei Xiao of the Yao Qing is the only one investigating the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis on behalf of the Alliance? <sighs> no, no. I am too. This old man's words always catch me off guard. The Marshal ordered me to come to the Xianzhou Lawful, but the document only says 
Attend the war dance and listen to Fei Shao's questioning. The Marshal is well aware of Jing Yuen's purpose in holding the ceremony and understands the situation he is facing. She mentioned it because she believes both issues are important. Thanks for your kindness and sincerity, Elder Huayan. But is it appropriate to tell everyone here about the Marshal's orders? By introducing the Express's witnesses to me alone, Aren't you aiming to discern the intentions behind both my actions and Fei Shao's? And whether there's any discord between us? Well, since I'm being open and honest with you, I encourage you young folk to do the same. As for the Ambrosial Arbor Crisis, all I need to do is listen. General Fei Shao will be the one asking the questions. To be honest, I'm more concerned about the timely start of the war dance. Oh, by the way, I've prepared a gift for the war dance. Yes, it's this case right here. There will be numerous contests and celebrations during the war dance, and the main event will be the Ringmaster's Challenge. The host will dispatch a skilled warrior to take on challengers from all over the cosmos, showcasing the excellent martial arts of the Sienzhou Lawfu. When you mentioned that the Astral Express would be attending the ceremony, I thought the High Elder of the Lawfu would be the Ringmaster. <laughs> You humor me, Elder Huayan. The healer lady is just a young lady who knows nothing about martial arts. How can I assign her as the ringmaster? <laughs> I'm no match to you when it comes to joking. What's this box for? Why don't you open it, General Huayan? This sword case is intended for the war dance's award. It's empty now. But in a few days, a precious sword will be delivered and stored inside. I don't mean to boast about our skills, but this sword represents the pinnacle of the Ju Ming's craftsmanship. It has a legendary history, full of heroic tales from foreign lands. Tales that are too detailed to be summarized in just a few words. Since the delegation delivering the sword hasn't arrived yet, I'll just leave the case here for now. I've been wondering who would be worthy of such a sword. And then it hit me. I can award it to the champion of the Ringmaster's Challenge. The ceremony's champion is sure to be a perfect match for the sword. Moreover, I hear that Yen Xing is an excellent swordmaster, and that he will be representing the Lawfu as the Ringmaster. So it seems like a perfect gift for him. Thank you for your generosity, Elder Huayan. If you want to give me a sword, just say the word, Grandpa. No need to beat around the bush. <laughs> You've got confidence, my girl. But I don't think you can best Yin Jing. I know you're all about swords, Miss Yunli. It's just a shame that it's the sword that ultimately chooses its rightful master. Yeah, and even if someone gets their hands on such a precious sword, it'll probably end up in someone else's. The outcome of our duel at the Alchemy Commission is still up in the air. Since you're interested, why don't you represent the Xianzhou Juming and challenge me in the ring? That's exactly what I had in mind. Nobody knows who's gonna come out on top. It could be me, could be someone else. It'll probably be me. But whatever happens, it won't be him. Oh, not 
to be rude or anything. We've been watching their drama. I'm dying to find out who beats who. Hmm. Quiet down. We have other guests here. I've prepared this sword to add some excitement to the ceremony, not to have you two squabble. It's not a good look for the Alliance. While you both seem confident that you'll win, you need to remember there can only be one winner and one loser in the ring. Which could lead to hard feelings. Actually, I have an idea. We don't know who the winner will be, and it might not be either of you. But, if you're eyeing that prize, you'll need to work together. I want you to take on an apprentice who will take part in the war dance and win at least one match. How does that make sense? In my humble opinion, while a Cloud Knight is commendable by securing victories, it's even more so to pass on your skills and spread the way of swordplay. I'd be greatly pleased if this apprentice could represent the Express in the war dance by displaying their Cloud Knight flair and prowess. Well, Elder Huayan's idea is quite interesting. Imparting swordplay skills requires teamwork, and both the winner and the loser will learn a valuable lesson regardless of the outcome. The question is, whom should the two of them take as an apprentice? I noticed just now that Miss March seemed quite interested in the outcome of your sword fight. So I thought, why not teach her the art of swordplay? Uh, oh, wait! Are you serious, General? Why am I being dragged into this all of a sudden? I've never practiced swordplay before! I'm a total newbie! You really think I can learn it? Oh, you'll probably realize I have no hope and give up on me. And that'd be so embarrassing. Isn't this a perfect chance for you? I remember you mentioning that you wanted to learn some sword moves. Yeah, I did say that. But this is all happening so quickly, don't you think? Miss March is like a piece of jade in the rough, just waiting to be shaped. The war dance is the perfect opportunity to see what heights she can reach. I appreciate your kind words, General Huayan. But won't teaching me swordplay be a waste of Yan Qing and Yunli's time? They should be preparing for the ceremony. Plus, I heard that each swordmaster has their own special moves. What if they let something slip while teaching me? If everyone knows each other's tactics, won't that make it hard to catch people off guard during the war dance? <sighs> That's considerate of you, March 7th. But don't worry. It'll take you at least a decade of hard training before you can even start learning special moves. No need to freak out. A few zooming swordplay tricks will mean you'll be more than equipped. Uh, really? Looks like March's curiosity has been piqued. <laughs> the whole point is to know each other's moves. Defeating your opponent in just one move? How boring would that be? Plus, what really decides a swordsman's fate isn't some special move. It's the solid fundamentals. So Miss Yunli has already agreed. What do you say, Yang Ching? General? I... I haven't graduated yet. How can I be qualified to teach swordplay to others? Huh. So you're admitting your defeat, huh? If you're not even confident to teach, why don't you let me be the ringmaster instead? Yang Qing, teaching an apprentice is also a way of honing your own skills and gaining insights. You've been an apprentice for years. It's about time you looked at swordplay from another perspective. I see, General. Then count me in. Now that Yang Cheng has agreed too, it all comes down to Miss March giving her nod. <sighs> it's up to you to make the final decision, March. Ha! <laughs> 
at least that way, I won't have to worry about you accidentally shooting me in the butt all the time. Hey, I've never missed my target. Then I'm on board. Thank you for your kindness, General Huayan. Great. Starting tomorrow, Yen Ching and Yun Li will teach you the basics of the Cloud Knight's swordplay. Yun Li and I will head out and purchase some sword practice equipment for Miss March. Think of it as a little initiation gift. <laughs> you're too kind. Oh, wait, you're giving me a gift? Shouldn't it be the other way around? Ah, General Huayan's gone. Wait, why does something feel off about what we talked about? Ah, oh, I think we strayed off topic. How did things even get to this point? Yeah, I brought you here because the General said he had some important matters to discuss. But how in the world did Yun Li and I suddenly become Miss March's swordplay mentors? Because... General Huayan wants us to stick around on the Lo Fu for some time. But from his point of view, we're no different from all the other tourists who may leave at any time. Since the crew's actions were mentioned in the Lo Fu's operations log were given to the Alliance, he probably wants to see firsthand if we're as capable as to report claims, or if we're just some made-up excuse to save face. And he wants to see it for himself during the war dance, which is why he even dragged Yun Li into this. What began as a simple contest between two sword masters has <laughs> now evolved into you two collaborating to mentor March. Elder Huayan is still that tricky general who likes to give everyone a headache. My apologies. Truth be told, I invited all of you to the ceremony because I wished for you to act as my witnesses. Now I apologize for not disclosing this information earlier. In the coming weeks, I'll also invite all of you to a meeting with General Fei Xiao, where you may need to answer her questions and clear up any doubts she might have. So please, be prepared for the meeting. Don't worry, General. No matter what happens, I'm prepared to stay here as the Express's witness and answer any questions. <sighs> Thank you, everyone. General, I know there isn't much I can do to share your burden, but... Hmm? As the Lawfu Ringmaster, I won't let anyone defeat me in the war dance. <laughs> I know. The illustrious Merlin's Claw waiting for me? And for so long, too? It's quite an honor. It's been a while, General Feishao. It's been 30 years since we last saw each other, right, Yukong? Yes. Back then, you were the vanguard of the Yao Qing's verdant knights, and I was a pilot of the Law Fu's Rainbow Orbit Fleet. Who would have thought that upon meeting again, you'd be a general, and I'd have given up flying? It really does feel like a lifetime ago. Well, I wouldn't say I haven't seen you in 30 years. After all, your great victories are announced through the Yellow Bell Resonance System every day. So I'm well aware of your great feats. How's your health holding up? Still stable, I suppose. Do you still remember the medic who saved me in battle? That healer with the odd name and peculiar temperament. What was his name again? Was it Pichu? Or Katyo? Jiao Chou. 
He's been my retainer and personal healer, delegated by the Alchemy Commission from the Xianzhou Yao Cheng. Over the years, he's dedicated himself to managing my condition. It's thanks to him that I'm still in good health today. Given my background, I'm happy to have made it this far. I'm relieved to know that you're safe and sound. Well then, since you and Elder Hua Yen are here, I imagine you must have received orders from the Marshal? As your friend, may I ask how the Alliance intends to punish the General of the Law Fu? The Arbor's rebirth has frightened the Elders who lurk behind the scenes. They fear the resurgence of abominations, much like what happened 30 years ago. Although, the reports from the Law Fu explained all the details, we don't know if the Ruin Legion really invaded, or how exactly the Stellaron Hunters and the Astral Express became involved. This puzzle has many missing pieces. As you know, the fugitive Jing Liu, who mysteriously disappeared many years ago, has resurfaced. This time, she has brought along an outworlder and a coffin, claiming to offer the Marshal a method to fight against the Eons. The Law Fu Preceptor has also leveled accusations against Jing Yuan for neglecting the Alliance's principles. She asserts that Jing Yuan enabled the exiled Imbibitor Lune to re-enter the Law Fu, thereby unlocking the Lunarescent Deaths within Scale Gorge Waterscape, which in turn disrupted the Vidyatara's dutiful watch over the Ambrosial Arbor. It is for these reasons that I have come here to the Law Fu today. Well, duty calls. Perhaps I shouldn't have mentioned all of this to an uninvolved person, but since we once fought together, I didn't want to keep you in the dark. Perhaps pretending you didn't hear any of this would be for the best. I understand. I'm sorry. I was out of line. I know I shouldn't be defending General Jing Yuan right now, but... Well, you know how I am. The Law Fu has enjoyed centuries of stability since the end of the sedition of Imbibitor Lune, much of which can be attributed to General Jing Yuan's masterful strategizing. Unfortunately, for long-life species, enduring through the ages always culminates in a failure that undoes all previous achievements, a moment that our adversaries relish. That's true. And that's why I'm also here for another purpose. To visit Hule. Hule? You mean that Hule? The Boris in Warhead? The same Hule who has been imprisoned in the Shackling Prison for over seven centuries? The nemesis of the Foxians who will never be forgiven and shall be imprisoned until the end of the cosmos. I can't quite remember the exact wording, but yes, the very same Hule. Usually, only emissaries from the Xianzhou Yao Qing Skyfaring Commission visit him once every century. Why do you have to visit him now, of all times? The Foxians in the Alliance made a pact to combat the Abominations, aiming to achieve justice and free their kin. That werewolf monster is to be forever imprisoned in the dark recesses of the Shackling Prison, facing unending retribution. Given the situation on the Law Fu, those on the Yao Qing are concerned about Hule's imprisonment. I'm afraid that the routine visit every century is no longer sufficient to ease their concerns. That's why I was sent here, to reassure them. <sighs> It's all bad news. Well, not everything. There might be a silver lining. Oh, by the way, I found some clues about the thing you asked for. Hm. Tell me more. The Verdant Knights followed the route you mentioned and discovered the wreckage of the Whistling Flame ship. Unfortunately, there were no survivors and no cargo. <sighs> However, someone had already been on the scene before we arrived. Our people? Or someone from the IPC? No, neither. Yukong, 
Have you heard of a person named Ron May? 